Uh, thank you and uh, good evening and welcome to uh, Statesman of Comedy. Uh, each week I'll be joined by some of the legends of Australian comedy and let's meet them right now. First off, well, is there a bigger name in Australian comedy than this man, two-time AFI award-winning actor to boot, Shane Bourne. Thank you, Shane. What a delight to be here. Absolutely, mate. Let's uh, move on. Well, what can I say? You know her, you love her. Jane Kennedy. And our third guest tonight is a man who's uh, worked one night stands all around the country. He's been up and down the radio dial and the television dial. He just can't hold down a job. <laughs> Tim Smith. <laughs> Just happy to be out of the house. <laughs> Same here. Isn't it great? Yeah. Terrific. Let's take our clothes off and rub up against one another. <laughs> Well, look, uh, well, Tim, uh, I have to say, as a, as a marmalade, uh, I do have the surname to myself, but what's it like being a Smith? Oh, I'm, and I am a Smith, um, and uh, on my honeymoon, uh, my wife and I uh, went to a hotel, and uh, so, uh, we were living in Smith Street at that stage, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, and we signed in on our honeymoon, uh, Mr and Mrs Smith of Smith Street, and the guy went... Really, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shane, uh, as a two-time AFI award-winning actor, yep. but, uh, no one can say it's a fluke when it happens a second time. No, they can't, I suppose. But um, you know, the, the the shine kind of wears off after. I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> <laughs> but, you but you know, can't be honest. Yeah, well, time, you, can, you can take a rag and give him a bit yeah. of polish. <laughs> time for another one. Thanks. <laughs> 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 City Homicide can't get arrested in the awards. Well, uh, actually, probably, yeah, after the great Aussie joke, you would have had uh, people just uh, yelling at you in the street, hey, tell us a joke. The yeah. people, like, yell out, hey, solve a murder for us. <laughs> <laughs> You hear some kids late at night in the city go, there's that copper bloke. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept walking pretty fast. <laughs> How were you balling out skills, Shane? Because you do a lot of balling out in that show. Yeah, I try not to go too far over the top. I try to internalise, mm -hmm. just like a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane, uh, yeah, multi-talented, obviously, but uh, you've stepped into a different world recently. You've released your second cookbook, well, yes, it's not a dream. Apparently it's reality and I've decided I'm a bit of a chef -y kind of lady all of a sudden after all these years. Well, has it changed uh, your life being a food <laughs> aficionado these days? You know what, it has because um, I I've got a blog and I've, I've got Twitter and they're asking me, you know, how, do you, how, many, how much do I add here and how do I do this with the zucchini and, yeah, it's a bit of a spin out. <laughs> <laughs> Best zucchini joke done. <laughs> uh, so does it change when you go to restaurants and stuff now? Um, uh, what's changed is, because basically my premise of this book is um, it's without the boomba, so it's sort of cooking without making you really pork up big time. But if I go to a restaurant and I'm <laughs> hanging out to have, you know, a bread roll and some chips... <laughs> Janie, what is the secret in, in, like, eating healthy? Well, you've just got to make it taste good without having all the fried crappy bits, you mm. see. But yeah, fried just, makes it good. Fried, is, <laughs> fried tastes brilliant, but fried's not good for my ass, so I just can't do that anymore. So. Well, so I haven't got an ass. <laughs> well, it's, it's moved upwards and forwards. <laughs> I want to know, where did restaurants first get the idea that nothing came with it? Oh, like, yeah. It, like, it, mm. in the old days, you order, you know, a bit of fish or some steak and, you know, it came with some vegetables or it came with, you know, a bit of chips and salad and stuff. Now... You know, you order a steak and it comes like 38 bucks, bang, piece of steak. <laughs> uh, they're going, oh, well, you want something with that? You go, well, yeah, OK, spuds, that's an extra 10 bucks. No, uh, no, no it's gone crazy. The beans, bowl of beans, $8.50. I mean, where's all this headed? Uh, like, would you like to purchase a knife and fork with that soup? <laughs> uh, would you care to see a lease plan for a napkin? <laughs> and, like, they've gone berserk with the descriptions now. Oh. Yeah, when, when they've got the big descriptions, I now order... As per the description on the menu. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, fish, steak, yeah, spaghetti. Uh, thank you. I'll have the uh, twice cooked blue eyed pan sauteed, <laughs> resting on the bed of saffron mash, finished with Roma tomatoes and basil, and nestling alongside the uh, thick cut homemade polenta chips. <laughs> And uh, while you're at it, uh, can I have some tomato sauce with that? 
<laughs> no, just put it on the side, though. I don't want to eat it. I just want to do the chef's head in. <laughs> Specials board. Oh, yeah, that here's can be intimidating. Can't the performance trip with the fucking specials board. <laughs> and why do we have to know what the fucking animal ate before they killed him? <laughs> oh, I want the grain fed beef because I know that he was happy eating that. <laughs> Yeah, I like to say to them, actually, I want a cow that had a mouthful of duck risotto when they're standing. <laughs> well, look, uh, we're going to uh, bat up our first segment for discussion tonight, and that is Lost in Translation. You guys are all well-travelled, but the trouble is sometimes the language barrier gets in the way. I mean, it's OK if you're an American tourist because everyone speaks uh, English as long as you speak it loudly enough. <laughs> but, you know, you do have problems sometimes making yourself understood, you know. And actually, I love the signs sometimes that you see in foreign countries where they don't quite get it right. Like, uh, I was driving along in Thailand and there was a little furniture shop there and it had a sign outside saying, uh, antiques made to order. <laughs> Well, Shane, uh, you travelled Europe a few years ago with the, with the phrase book in hand, I believe. Yeah, I did, actually. I found that was a way of kind of breaking the ice because they realised it wasn't your native tongue. Mm -hmm. And was doing OK for a while. In France, I was, until I realised I had the German phrase book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> rubbish. Yeah, I, I had trouble trying to buy sunscreen in a village in France. Not because of the language, it was the sign language I couldn't get down. You know, I was kind of, well, well I didn't know Sol. Sol is uh, sun, I assume, is that right? Mm, Maybe. Uh, yeah. May we? <laughs> you may, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, it just became very difficult. I thought it was on the, I was talking about, you know, Le Sol block. Um, <laughs> the other thing that came to mind, because I can't remember a lot of this stuff when you get to this age, 42, 43 mark. Um, <laughs> You're approaching 40, just from the wrong direction. <laughs> the wrong direction. <laughs> Being in India on a railway station, they have people who come around and do everything, and they have this little tin, and they, they, they offer to clean your ears. <laughs> yeah, they do. Or they do your nose. You see people on the side of the road, they're hooking into something's <laughs> nose. <laughs> but the guy comes up with a little tin, and, you know, so do what you go to? And I couldn't resist. I said, pardon? <laughs> Big laugh. <laughs> Well, I had, the, I had the thing where I was uh, in Mexico and uh, I, I love, you know, getting involved in the languages and, like, uh, yeah, it shows a bit of respect and, you know, and they really appreciate it in some places. And uh, I was out for breakfast and uh, the menus came out in Spanish and uh, I had a look through and I went, actually, no, I can do this. I can do this. So uh, the waitress came, uh, came out and I'm saying, OK, I'll have uh, the huevos rancheros uh, with uh, jamón, el queso, uh, just naranja and uh, café americano. And she went... Will that be all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, I was in, in, I guess, provincial France and we uh, rocked into an Italian restaurant. So, of course, everything on the menu is in Italian, but, of course, it's lasagna, spaghetti bolognese. So we know exactly what it is. And we've just turned around to the French waiter. And the trick is, in France, they hate English people. So what you have to do is say, no parlez-vous français, not English, <laughs> Australian. And then they go, all right, OK, Australian, all right. Well, I can actually speak English, mate. But if, if they think you're English, they just go, oh, no parlez-vous English. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a good face. <laughs> you could play, yeah, you could play could. a Frenchman. It's a distasteful. Mm. You could be in the new version of Hello, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dead ringer, isn't he? He is a dead ringer. <laughs> yeah. So we're in this restaurant and I've just sort of gone, oh, look, um, we, we, we can order... And the, and, the, and the waiter's gone, uh, no, parlez-vous, English. No, uh, and he's gone, bop, 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 <laughs> and gone over and he's bought this retired English colonel over. He says, oh, I say, chaps, what's, what's this with the problem? And we've gone, look, there's no problem, mate. Um, we're from Australia. Uh, we can order. And he's gone, oh, well, I'll sort it out for you, chaps. What would you like for entree? And I've gone, I'll have the entree lasagna. And he's gone, don't have the lasagna. <laughs> This guy's gone, oh, no, lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I was literally in Poland and, I, and it was the town where the Pope's born. I can't even remember the name of the town because it's banished from my mind forever for Popey reasons. <laughs> and um, I recall that I'm, I suspected I may have been up the duff. Because, um, you suspected. I suspected for some reason. Um, I need to find out so I can continue 
either with a lot of this or yeah. none of that oh, at all. Yeah. So I went, oh, I've got to try and find a chemist or pharmacy and they didn't really have, you know, they didn't have a price line in downtown <laughs> Walsall. <laughs> so I'm looking around and I finally found sort of a, a store, a sort of, you know, thing with glass jars in the front window that looked a bit pharmacy and a guy in a coat and I went in and I wanted, you know, the stick. The wee the, stick. A pregnancy test. A pregnancy test. Yeah. test. Yeah. So I went, and, you know, I can get away with a bit of Italian or French, mm -hmm. maybe Spanish, but Polish is you're beyond me and nothing it's matches beyond at them. all. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go and I went, hola, I probably said. And, <laughs> and I said, mm, yes, no, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a tube of something came out and it wasn't what I wanted no, and I had no. to wait till I get home and it was hernia cream. <laughs> <laughs> and a whopping big hernia cream. Well, I was in, I was in uh, Beijing with a mate of mine and we went to the Temple of Heaven and uh, we got out of the car and we were just, you know, beset by your vendors. You know, you buy, you buy, you buy. And I go, no, 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 no. And it's, like, and it's a long walk up to the <laughs> Temple of Heaven, which is probably no accident, I suppose. But, um, <laughs> but we had, like, after, well after everyone else had dropped off, we had one lady just following us going, DVD, DVD. And I go, no, 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 I don't want a DVD. Yeah, we got Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> And eventually, like, uh, we, we were almost inside of the temple and, uh, and like, my mate just turned to me and said, look, will you please, we don't want to buy any DVDs, will you please leave us alone? She went, where are you from? And he went, Norway. <laughs> and she went, only 50 krona. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, we've got uh, over 100 years of uh, comedy experience on the panel tonight, and when we come back, we're going to give you the benefit of some of that in Comedy Masterclass. Oh. Uh, thank you very much, and welcome back. It's time for Comedy Masterclass. Let's have a look at this week's quote. It's uh, very good advice indeed. Never go on stage when people are eating because, uh, let's face it, uh, you know, they're not looking, they've got their head down on the plate and it's very hard to laugh with a mouthful of rubber chicken, as a general rule, isn't it, uh, Shane? You know, the Sydney Comedy Store, they used to eat during... Uh, mm. the show. The problem was that they also were given bread rolls oh, and became yeah. a bit of a tradition <laughs> to throw bloody bread rolls. And Rodney Rood, who hosted the night, um, used to encourage it because he'd come out with a tennis racket. <laughs> <laughs> Start bashing them back. But the, the only bad time to take a gig is New Year's Eve. I was working at uh, the La Joke and, on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, and at the last laugh they had uh, they had the big room downstairs, which was for the uh, your, your cabaret shows, and upstairs they had the great little room uh, called the Joke, which was for stand-up comedy. And uh, someone got the idea there would be a great idea to um, put little hooters on the table. <laughs> oh. So you'd be up there going, yes, and uh, so the barman said, now we can all get some sleep, and all you hear was... <laughs> <laughs> One of the main things about New Year's Eve, of course, is counting in the new year, and I've never worn a watch. <laughs> so uh, it's getting towards the time. So I went up to Frank Italiano, who was doing the, the lights and sound, and said, oh, Frank, what's the time? He went, I don't know, I'm not wearing watch either. So we go out to the bar, we say, say the girls, anyone got the time here? And like, once, oh, it's about four minutes to, and someone else says, I, I might get two minutes to. <laughs> and someone else says, oh, I, I reckon it's seven to, but my watch is about five minutes fast. <laughs> so we go, well, what do we do? I well, said, oh, mate, you know. It's New Year's Eve whenever we say it is. <laughs> so I said, I'll just get up there, you're at the back of the room, and you know, I'll call it, you count it in, okay? So we get up there, and I'm going, okay, yes, everyone, uh, about to ring in the new year, let's all get ready. Frank, just tell us when he starts. Yeah, 10, 9, 8, okay, everyone, yes, it's happy new year. And he gets the champagne going, and the... And uh, everyone... <laughs> And uh, the room just, you know, the pandemonium dies down in the room just in time for us to hear from the downstairs, ten! <laughs> uh, I just join in. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we've heard it, dickhead! <laughs> Oh, mate, I reckon you Eve at the last laugh one really? night. I, I was hosting it 
and uh, and the and the owner um, said, "Oh mate, just grab the fire extinguisher and just give it to him." And I've gone, "Yeah, all right, I will." And I've grabbed the fire extinguisher. Of course, I've grabbed the chemical fire extinguisher <laughs> and given it to the audience, oh, and they've had to all be cleared out, evacuated from the from the room because there's just like white mist everywhere. There's on the tabletops is people's like the outline of people holding. <laughs> He's killed my fox stole. <laughs> the fox is coffee. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, let's uh, let's move along and uh, time for uh, one of my favourite segments here on Statesman of Comedy, Exhumed. <laughs> This is where we relive some of the great performances uh, from the past of uh, our erstwhile guests here tonight. And Shane, we're going to start with you. Circa 1988, you used to be a regular on Carols by Candlelight. I know you're dying to see this. Let's roll the ugliness. Uh, now, what I want you to do yeah. is very important. I want oh, you to go you on the left. Magic magic no, no, card over there. Right. You're the elf. Yes, and yeah. something magical will happen. Darryl, yeah, it looks Believe like Neil Sedaka. <laughs> I think that's actually the Circa Man of La Mancha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Harvey in the background. Right? <laughs> I had to work with this little kid who was the my assistant elf, who was three years of age, and uh, took a serious disliking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't do anything that Santa would ask him, even in rehearsals, and his mum saying, give him lollies, give him lollies, and... <laughs> All that kind of stuff. On the night at work, because she came with some ice cream, and he loved ice cream, so I was just going, you know, here, come here. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> we did the thing. At the end of the thing, I don't know if you remember, they'd have, you know, so this is Christmas, and it'd be Barry Crocker and Marina Pryor and Ray Martin, and da 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 could have been Brian Nail, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And Denise Drysdale, Humphrey B. Bear, and myself and the little elf on my shoulders, come out for this. We're the last people on stage. And um, had the little elf, the three-year-old, who was happy now, you know, I had ice cream pouring down the back of my neck, but it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> to, no, this is Christmas. And as I got to about centre stage, the pants kind of dislodged. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I hit centre stage, the pants have crashed to the floor. <laughs> I've got the elf. I feel the breeze. <laughs> no, that's a black shot. <laughs> And there's 40,000 people just... And you could hear them, they were pissing themselves. <laughs> I'm thinking, what do I do? Chuck the kid and pull up the... <laughs> and it's not a good look when you're trying to pull your pants out. You've got a kid on your shoulders. <laughs> And I swear to you, at drinks afterwards, no one had talked to me. <laughs> uh, Jane, oh, going back to one of your early gigs, mm. this is from a little uh, lifestyle show called Nightlife. Oh. Well, for the past couple of weeks on Nightlife, we've been looking at hotels <laughs> in the city area. Other people of Dandenong can enjoy sophistication and class at the top hotel and night spot, and it's called the New Hotel. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Oh, I had so much shit hung on me after um, that. Tony Martin, who I used to work with, um, I think just, you know, absolutely love that piece. First of all, the incredible oxymoron when I said, at last, class and sophistication has come to Dandenong. <laughs> <laughs> now, was, that, was that in the 80s? Yeah, yeah. Were those earrings, were they feathers? Uh, no, I think they're fed in some huge pieces of plastic. Oh, the plastic. And I have the monobrow happening as well. I've since oh, learned how to cut my eyebrows. Yeah. Well, that was all we got back then. Yeah, well, yeah. No need to introduce the eyebrows. They've already I'm met. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, Tim, we have a two-time AFI award-winning actor on the show tonight, and mm. you are a no-time AFI award-winning no. actor. Had a bit of a dabble in it when I was uh, younger. Mm -hmm. You did. You once appeared on... The Flying Doctors. Oh. I believe oh, I did. I'm so jealous. Oh, well. Oh. Was that when you were contracted to nine? <laughs> well, I no, was warehoused. Yeah. I was warehoused, that's <laughs> right. You and Nick from the comedy company. I was. And you were at a nine. warehouse. And they said, we want you to stay here at Channel 9, but do not do any work. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, Tim Smith, The Flying Doctors. I knew it. You were. Oh. Even better out of uniform than in. 
Pinky oh. Colgate. Oh, yeah, I patched that. Yeah. Nah. Oh. Who's Daddy? Going in for an early one. Was that in a script? Yeah. It's a taste of things to come. Oh, oh, you're creepy. creepy. Oh, no. Let a girl, Jack. Keep me dangling. I don't mind going through the ritual. Oh. I, I believe, Tim, you, you, that your role there was as a dentist. You were a flying dentist. I was a flying dentist. <laughs> and yes, Jane, thank you. I was creepy. <laughs> But the weird thing is, I have actually, for a, a pretty ordinary looking head, I have actually pashed off some really good you, chicks. You wow. have. You yeah. have. <laughs> but you actually mm. were possibly the last man ever yes. to pash Portia de Rossi. Correct. <gasps> I actually turned her off all men. <laughs> Yes. What was the situation? Um, it was All Star Square, so I was in the middle square. She came over and I went, hello, Portia, and she went, hello, Tim. And I came into her and went, I'm going to kiss you. And she went, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and she kissed back, Joe. Oh, I got wow. the biggest shock of my life. Wow. But did she kiss back or yes, did she kiss she back? Yes, she kissed back. And did I'd she? like to think that Ellen has tasted me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, there we go. We're going to take that footage and bury it back way deep down where it could never hurt anybody again. Uh, we're going to take a little break and we'll be back with tonight's Know Your Quiz, thanks to Pure Blonde. Welcome back to Statesman of Comedy and a quick plug, Jane Kennedy, the brand new book... <laughs> Oh my God! I can eat that. Yeah. In fact, uh, Jane, would you do me? Would you just uh, sign I will, that yeah. for me? Absolutely. Thank you, Dom. Absolutely. I appreciate that. No worries. Time to move on to the Know Your Quiz. Thanks to Pure Blonde White. <laughs> and this week's quiz is Know Your Celebrity Brush with the Law. Oh yeah. Okay, and this is how it works. We're going to put up a photo of a celebrity offender, and you have to tell me a who it is and b what their brush with the law was. All right, let's start off with a nice, easy one. Oh, he looks yeah. so cute there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that just after he's in the car? With... Well, are we, are we going to oh. weigh in with an answer oh, here? it's Hugh Grant. Okay. It's after he's um, had uh, some proceedings with a young black hooker. I believe... By the name uh, of... Devon Brown. Brown. Yes! yes. Oh, okay. Tim, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. I'm yeah. the black hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, here's a second photo coming up. Mm. Is that Brad Pitt? Can you tell me who that is? Is that Brad Pitt on a really and bad day? What they did. <laughs> that is. It's not Brad Pitt. We're showing our age. That is Kid Rock. Oh, oh. Kid in Rock. In 2005, oh. he was arrested at Christie's Cabaret after getting in a fight with the strip club's j DJ over the choice of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to a strip club for the yeah. music. <laughs> Well, maybe he's out for a bit of bump and grind and they're going... Yeah. Taking the naughtiness out of it. All right, uh, see so if you can guess this one. Oh, yeah, I know that. It's Dana Jane? Plato. Dana Plato from Different Strokes. From what different did she stroke. do? I think really? she um, she held up a... Was it a dry cleaners or something? She went in with guns and... She oh, did, actually. It was... Uh, I'll pay that. It was a video store. Wow, well, video store. And story, the story huh? goes that the attendant called 911 and said, I've just been robbed by the girl from Different Strokes. <laughs> I hope the guy on the phone uh. went, what are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a look at this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. That's Macaulay Culkin. Is it? No, 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 no sorry, no. it's the oh, spooky no. guy the guy dead in, people. That's right, I see dead people. Joel. Hi. Yeah, Hayley Osmond. Not, Hayley. Thank, you very, much. Thank Someone... you very much, Tim. Hayley Joel Osmond, it was. What's he been Star up to? of the Sixth Sense, and he was arrested after crashing his car into a mailbox. There you go, he can see dead people. <laughs> Mailbox, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's, here's someone I feel sorry for. Let's have a look at this one. <laughs> there she is. Now, she's probably a bit older than... Is she shrinking? Oh, when I know. When you would know her best. Yeah, it's um, what, she's Mary older. Ann from Gilligan's Island. That is absolutely correct. What? And I know what her misdemeanour is. Do What's you? that? Sorry. She had a bit of the uh, hooch and uh, she got picked up she for driving. Did. Uh, she did. She was driving under the influence of hooch. Nut. She was uh, picked up. Was she? Singing correct. a theme from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> 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 she had so much coconut cream pie. <laughs> I think uh, the attention was first attracted to the police by her driving along in a bamboo car. <laughs> Probably. There we well, go. That's all us. the time we have for yeah. on our Know Your Quiz. Oh, there's no doubt about our winner, Jane. Very well done. Oh, Jane, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. So and Jane, 
you in this fabulous prize. Thanks, Trev. Congratulations. Oh. You've won a slab of pure blonde white. That's right. You and 23 friends are off to your place for a quiet sip. And the quiet sip is on us. And it's beautifully presented in its own state-of-the-art cardboard carrying case. Remember to drink responsibly, or if you drink plenty, just act responsibly. You'll be the envy of your neighbours thanks to pure blonde white. It's beautiful, isn't it? Thank you very much uh, for coming along tonight. Will you please put your hands together for Shane Bond. <laughs> Shane Kennedy <laughs> and Tim Smith. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on The Statesman of Comedy. Good night.